Hello my fellow miner. Today we'll be comparing dual mining ETH plus ton in the new LOL miner and the new G miner. I'm not going to read the changes as they are quite uninteresting and say absolutely nothing about money printing. Oh yes, just like that. Okay, money usually smells of a uh, butt. So that's pretty disgusting. Actually, don't do it. Oh no, I... That is super gross, to be honest. And that is how the zombie apocalypse started. Quickly moving on like a ninja, uh, we're going to have a look at the RTX 3050 from MSI, the Ventus 2X, the RTX 3060 LHR version 2 from Soltech Gaming. It has been working perfectly and very good quality to be honest. The RTX 3060 Ti from Asus, their Tough series. No, that is actually the wrong picture. There, now we have the right one. The graphic card comes with two balls of steel in each fan. Military grade. Yes, yes, a piano was dropped on my head as a kid, so I am legally excused. We also have the MSI Venture 3, which is also an RTX 3060 Ti. Rocking Hynix RAM. But this time it's a revision 2, and that means it can actually clock up to 1700 in Windows or 3400 in Hive OS. This very nice card is super slim and super noisy. Then we have the RTX 3070 iChill 4X from Eno 3D. It's actually surprisingly good. The quality is top notch, I've not changed anything. It's super cool actually. And then of course it comes with lots of RGBs that you cannot turn off via the software because the software part sucks. But it doesn't matter because more RGBs, more mega hash. Up next we have the RTX 3070 Ti from Sotag Gaming, also known as the DIY 3070 Ti because it drops thermal padding and comes with screws that have fallen out. I actually expected the quality to be uh, on pair with their RTX 3060. Oh boy, was I wrong. What a pile of poop. And then we have the RTX 3080 LHR from Gigabyte Vision Overclock Revision 2. It's actually quite good looking, but I wish you could get it in black brushed metal instead, even though it doesn't really matter because it's part of my mining rig and I never see it. The RTX 3080 12GB RAM edition from Gigabyte, the gaming overclock, LHR Extreme. Okay, it's not actually called Extreme. Unfortunately, my RTX 3080 Ti is on vacation and will be back after repairs. If you haven't subscribed, Uncle Donkey would very much like you to hit subscribe and afterwards that bell notification. Yes, the bell so you can get spammed even while you sit on the toilet. I mean, who doesn't want to get a random notification at random times around the clock? It is very nice. So remember to hit the bell notification and you will get unwanted messages all the time. Now let's move on and have a look at the overclock settings. At the top we have G minor and at the bottom we have LOL minor. Now let's have a look at the overclock settings for the RTX 3050. In Hive OS I locked the core clock at 1500 and set the memory clock to 2200. That is 1100 in Windows. If you are using Windows, just create batch files based upon what you see here. Now let's have a look at your clock settings for the RTX 3060. In Hive OS, I locked the core clock at 1552 and set the memory clock to 2600. That is 1300 in Windows. If you are using Windows, simply create batch files based upon what you see here. Now let's have a look at your clock settings for the RTX 3060 Ti. High next memory, revision 1. In Hive OS, I locked the core clock at 1350 and set the memory clock to 2100. That is 1050 in Windows. If you are using Windows, simply create batch files based upon what you see here and also remember to run them as admin, of course. Now let's have a look at your clock settings for the RTX 3060 Ti High next memory, revision 2. I locked the core clock at 1500 and set the memory clock to 3400 in Hive OS. In Windows, that is 1700. If you are using Windows, simply create batch files based upon what you see here. Let's have a look at your clock settings for the RTX 3070. In Hive OS, I locked the core clock at 1125 and set the memory clock to 2600. 
that is 1300 in Windows. If you are using Windows, simply create a bash file based upon what you see here. Now let's have a look at the overclock clock settings for the RTX 3070 Ti. I lock the core clock at 1050 and set the memory clock to 2400. That is 1200 in Windows. If you are using Windows, simply create batch files based upon what you see here. Now let's have a look at the overclock clock settings for the RTX 3080 10GB. In HiveOS, I lock the core clock at 1500 and the memory clock at 3400. That is 1700 in Windows. If you are using Windows, simply create batch files based upon what you see here. Now let's have a look at the overclock settings for the RTX 3080 12GB. In HiveOS, I lock the core clock at 1400 and the memory clock at 2400. That is 1200 in Windows. If you are using Windows, simply create batch files based upon what you see here. And now it's time to have a look at the overclock settings for the RTX 3080 Ti. Oh no, it's actually not because that one is being repaired. So let's just move on to the profit and hash rate screen. Poor, poor RTX 3080 Ti. Anyway, let's have a look at the results for the RTX 3050. Lot miner Ethereum, 16.7 MHz per second at 49.5 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0.337. Tontcoin, 760.7 MHz at 49.5 watts, which gives an efficiency of 15.366. Please note that to get the total watts, you have to add the 249.5, so that gives a total wattage of 99 watts. Now let's have a look at T-minus. Ethereum result. 17.3 MHz per second at 38 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.455. Tontcoin, 0, 0.0 MHz per second at 38 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0, 0.0. Yes, that is correct. I couldn't actually get it to work at all here. I would only mine Ethereum in this mode. Now let's move on and have a look at the results for the RTX 3060. First up is Lot Miner, Ethereum. 35.4 MHz per second at 68.5 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.517. Tontcoin, 1000. 89.4 MHz per second at 68.5 watts, which gives an efficiency of 15.904. G-minor Ethereum, 36.6 MHz per second at 67 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.546. Tontcoin, 382.9 MHz per second at 67 watts, which gives an efficiency of 5.715. Quickly moving on to the RTX 3060 Ti, military graded with two balls of steel. Ethereum, 42.8 MHz per second at 81 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.528. Tontcoin, 1288 MHz per second at 81 watts, which gives an efficiency of 15.901. G minor Ethereum, 43.7 MHz per second at 78.5 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.557. Tontcoin, 457.6 MHz per second at 78.5 watts, which gives an efficiency of 5.829. Moving on to the RTX 3060 Ti with revision to high index memory. Lot miner Ethereum, 46.1 MHz per second at 95 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.458. Tontcoin, 1434.1 MHz per second at 95 watts, which gives an efficiency of 15.096. G miner Ethereum, 46.8 MHz per second at 91.5 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.511. Tontcoin, 489 MHz per second and 91.5 watts, which gives an efficiency of 5.344. Ah, we are halfway in the results. Well, we wouldn't be if the RTX 3080 Ti still worked. But anyway, I'll get it back soon. Um, if you haven't subscribed now, it's a perfect time to subscribe. And if you really want to help me out, then share the video with people you know. Now, quickly moving on like a ninja to the RTX 3070. Lot miner Ethereum, 44.3 MHz per second at 72.5 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.611. Tontcoin, 1,271.8 MHz per second at 72.5 watts, which gives an efficiency of 17.542. G-miner Ethereum, 44.6 MHz per second at 70 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.637. Tontcoin 468.6 MHz per second at 70 watts, which gives an efficiency rating of 6.694. And now it's time for the average results of the RTX 3070 Ti. Lot Miner 
Ethereum. 55 MHz per second at 107 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0.514. Toncoin 1083 1083.7 MHz per second at 107 watts, which gives an efficiency of 10.128. G-Miner Ethereum. 58 MHz per second at 105.5 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.55. Ton coin. 365.6 MHz per second at 105.5 watts, which gives an efficiency of 3.465. Now it's time for the RTX 3080, 10 GB. LOL Miner Ethereum 72.9 MHz per second at 154 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0.473. Toncoin 2560 MHz per second at 154 watts, which gives an efficiency of 16.623. T-Miner Ethereum 76 MHz per second at 156 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.487. Toncoin 949.6 MHz per second at 156 watts, which gives an efficiency of 6.087. And now we are finally come to RTX 3080. 12 gigabyte. Are you excited to see this powerhouse of a graphic card? Well, don't be it's quite disappointing. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. LOL Miner Ethereum 61.9 MHz per second at 142 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0.436. Toncoin 2,954.7 MHz per second at 142 watts, which gives an efficiency of 20.808. T Miner Ethereum. 70.1 MHz per second at 131 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0 0.535. Toncoin 0, 0 0.0 MHz per second at 131 watts, which gives an efficiency of 0, 0. Please remember, you have to add the power of the two different coins together to get the total power. For example, the RTX 3070 on the G minor it says 70 watts. That is actually 140 watts total. Of course you got that the first time I told you, but just in case that uh, you accidentally skipped ahead, then now you know. Nah, I know you would never skip ahead. It's all the others who do it. It is actually pretty apparent from the comments who skips and who don't. Now, before we move on to the profits, let's uh, have a quick talk about the elephant in the room. So the RTX 3050 is in general a pretty bad graphic card, but if you get it for free from, from your company or whatever or your work, then uh, you can actually use it for mining. However, it doesn't really work in dual mode in G-Miner for some odd reason. I've actually spent a lot of time on it and then I was like, whatever, it doesn't really matter because I would not even mine it in, in dual mode anyway. And now that we are actually talking about dual mode anyway, I would not use dual mode at all because my power cost is too high to, for the dual mode to actually <laughs> earn me any money, I would lose money on using dual mode, which uh, I don't really find that appealing. So just uh, for your interest, always do your calculations afterwards on the profits to make sure that you earn money and not lose money. The second one is the RTX 3080 12 gigs, and as you can see, that is also pretty bad compared to the RTX 3080 10 gigs. And the reason for that is actually that either they haven't completely unlocked it yet, or that NVIDIA has changed the timing so it's even harder now to actually use the current method of LHR unlock. I think that is most likely the case. But it doesn't really matter because hopefully we will get completely rid of LHR uh, by the end of this week actually, it's very exciting. But let's wait and see how well it works if it even gets released if NVIDIA doesn't manage to block it. Unfortunately, that also means that my channel will be less interesting for you as you most likely watch most of my videos for the LHR unlock. But as you have most likely already noticed, I am diversifying and covering other coins as well. And I will also cover non-fungible non -fungible tofu. Or is it Tofi? Can't remember. Anyway, I will start uh, diversifying my portfolio so we have a lot of different videos. Now, let's have a look at the actual profits. Please note that the prices are based on today's prices, the day the video is released. And they will of course, most likely, like 99.9% .9 sure, change before you see them. So, go into Minerstat yourself and enter the numbers as you see them here and then add them together. In the case of G-Miner, you actually have to subtract the cost of a uh, mining Toncoin from the profits of Ethereum to get the correct profit. 
I'll say it again, I highly recommend that you actually do the calculations yourself as well, as it can lose you money to dual mine if your power cost is high enough, and that actually is, it doesn't even need to be that high anymore. So please, do your own calculations first, to see if it will cost you money comparing to just mining Ethereum straight up without any coin or any dual coin at all. Before I end the video, I would like to apologize that it's been a while since I've posted. I first got Corona while my son had the rotavirus, so I didn't actually sleep. I was up for like 27 hours straight, uh, making sure he didn't choke in his own puke. And then when he got well and I didn't have Corona anymore, I of course got the rotavirus myself, which resulted in me pooping and sleeping for almost five days straight. For anyone who's trying to lose weight, I recommend that as a very good way of losing weight. Unfortunately, I don't really need to lose any weight, so I'm now just skin and bones and actually quite tired all the time. So in short, the reason for me not posting that many videos currently is because 1. I am so tired, 2. I am super lazy. But I feel more active for every day that goes, so expect more videos to come soon. And that is all for this time, if you haven't subscribed, then subscribe, if you haven't liked the video, then like it, but only if you really like it, and then of course, share it with people you know. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you in the next one.